Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome finally to my brand review of peach slices. So this review will cover at least four weeks of usage with peach slices. I do want to make sure I explain something really quickly because somewhere in my description box below it says these reviews are all at least two weeks and yet they've been a whole lot longer pretty much this whole year. Just so you all know, when I do these brand reviews these days, I'm no longer completely switching over to the brand. Instead, I'm working their products into my routine. I feel like it's more realistic than just switching over entirely to the brand, but it also means it takes me a little longer to feel like my opinions are fully formed. So I kind of just film these videos whenever I feel ready, and I finally feel ready to talk about these Peach Slices products. So a little bit about the brand. Peach Slices is a sister brand of Peach and Lily. In fact, all of these products say on them distributed by Peach and Lily, which we reviewed a while ago on this channel. This is kind of the a uh, more simplified brand that I would say is geared in general towards a younger age. Please do not let that deter you from trying out products. I feel like there's a, a bit of a mentality within the beauty space of, you know, if you are X age, you have to spend X amount of money on skincare products, and I don't feel that's true at all. In fact, truthfully, all of these products were incredibly easy to work into my routine and great because I still do have acne prone skin. The products are made in Korea. The company itself is headquartered in the US by a Korean American founder. So I think it is pretty fair to say it is a US more drugstore affordable brand that is uh, based in the ideas of Korean skincare. And while Peach Lice has kind of struggled a bit to find their footing, there are some past products I've tried from the brand that I didn't like and I'm not including in today's video because I long decluttered them. It seems like Peach Slice's uh, place in the beauty space, at least in 2022, is a bit more centered around these three lines that you see behind me. Their Snail line, the Redness Rescue line, and the Acne line. And what we'll do in today's video is I'll talk about each of the lines. I'll save acne for last in case you don't deal with acne. And of course, feel free to use the timestamps in the description box to jump around to whatever interests you. I'll have links to these products on the all Alta website that I will affiliate and also Alta is where I bought these myself. Oh wait, no that's not true. I bought the acne products from CVS. I stand corrected. So CVS and Alta are both great places to get this brand, but without further ado, let's get into talking a little bit about my experience. So I want to start with the Snail Rescue line, and at this point in 2022, you all probably know a little bit about Snail Mucin products. They're kind of everywhere. They got very popular with the COSRX Advanced Snail 96 Power Mucin Essence. It really does make for a very interesting ingredient to include in skincare products because of its kind of similarities to the composition of our own human healthy skin. We're talking about glycosaminoglycans, we're talking about hyaluronic acid, and all of this comes together to really assist in wound healing and hydrating skin. And again, you all know my skin type, dry and acne prone, which is why this ingredient in general in the past has worked so well for me. The catch with the COSRX one is that it does feel slimy, which is pretty much what you would expect from snail slime. It is snail slime after all. Aren't we all surprised Nickelodeon never got on this sooner? But what's interesting about Peach Slice's take on snail mucin is that it is actually less slimy. It's less slimy. I don't know if it is just because of using different snail secretion filtrate, different snails perhaps, if it's more diluted. Because always keep one thing in mind when we're talking about skincare, you know, these both, these both have the same first ingredient, snail secretion filtrate, but that doesn't tell you the whole story about that ingredient. This is all to tell you the Snail Rescue Blemish Busting Toner feels more lightweight and less slimy in comparison to the COSRX. So if you've liked the idea of the COSRX, but it hasn't worked for you because of its texture, you might really like the Snail Rescue Blemish Busting Toner. I think it's also interesting that they named it Blemish Busting because in itself you wouldn't necessarily think of snail mucin as an acne fighting ingredient. And yet I do find it does help with acne, at least for me. It may clear pores, zap zits, and strengthen skin's barrier. That's the claim on peach slices and I do agree with that. One more note on snail, no, two more notes on snail mucin. One being it is possible to have an allergy to it. If you are noticing your skin is getting very red from using especially really innocuous products like this, you may have an allergy to snail mucin. 
redness, tiny little bumps, all of the classic signs of allergy. And secondly, I wanted to address the ethics of snail mucin. I've heard of a lot of different ways to collect snail mucin, some better than others. Both Kosar Rex and Peach Slices say that their snail mucin is ethically sourced. I'm not going to force you to try snail mucin if that is still something that doesn't sound all that appealing to you. No problem whatsoever. There's other alternatives. I know the green, V Green, is the brand I keep seeing you all talk about. But anyway, back to peach slices. The Snail Rescue Intensive Serum is the next product I wanted to talk about. And again, in comparison to the Cosarex, what's interesting here is that this is actually thicker. It is thicker, and yet somehow it is also less slimy than the Cosarex Essence. I really don't know how they accomplished this one. And the ingredients list is even better on this one. They've actually added those active constituents of Sika. So uh, hypothetically, not only are you getting all of those beneficial effects of the snail mucin itself at 95%, but you're also getting the Medecasoside and all of those other barrier boosting ingredients. So this is a very well-rounded product, but I'm gonna surprise you. I don't see myself repurchasing this one. I like it a lot, but it's $18 for one fluid ounce, and I feel like I've gone through it so quickly. Whereas, like I always say, the Cosarex is kind of more like a serum to me because of its consistency. And while it's $25 instead of 18, you get 3.38 fluid ounces. So for me, Cosarex still wins in the end. But alas, even though I'm telling you I don't see myself repurchasing this, I might repurchase this. I, I do like this one, especially for my DIY sheet masks. This texture works better than the thicker textures in doing that. So I might repurchase this one. I'm enjoying it quite a bit so far. This one, it's a no, but again, if you want something that is less slimy than Cosarex, you might love those. And then we have the Snail Rescue Intensive Wash Off Jelly Pack. Now I did, as I showed you all in Wednesday's video, I purchased the K-Beauty Stars Mask Kit. If you're interested in more on this, go see that video. I don't suspect these two are gonna stick around, so I'm gonna kick those out of today's video and only talk about the snail mask. TLDW, I don't think you need to buy this kit. But the Snail Rescue Intensive Wash Off Mask is a permanent mask in the Peach Slices brand. And I do, I like it, but I don't love it. And I want to be clear here that I'm just not the world's biggest wash off mask person, especially when it comes to ingredients that I'm perfectly fine with leaving on my skin. So I think it's a bit of a disconnect in uh, this product being, you know, a product that I would like to start with. Yeah, I think that's really what it comes down to for me. I guess I can see the appeal if you really love wash off masks. I think it's just that I don't. And so I, I become not the best person to review this. As always, you know, this is not a video of my way or the highway if you love this mask or any of the products that I end up not loving as much. Feel free to share your thoughts. I also personally found this a little difficult to remove. A washcloth helps a lot, but again, I don't see why I would put myself through that when I don't like that product category, but I do love the essence category. I think one more thing we could talk about is that, you know, even when you really love the benefits of an ingredient, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a whole lot more from making your entire routine centered around that ingredient. For example, with Cosarex, I decluttered their cleanser. That's a lot of why I didn't even bother to buy the peach slices one. I didn't feel like I was getting anything extra by having snail mucin in a cleanser. Does that make sense? It's a great ingredient and I get it here. And that's where I get it. So let's move on next to the Redness Relief Collection. I want to start with none other than the Azelaic Acid Serum with 10% Azelaic Acid. According to Peach Slices, this is an advanced treatment to visibly reduce redness and it really is in my opinion, an amazing product. I absolutely have fallen in love with azelaic acid, and let me really quickly tell you why. Azelaic acid is a very unique ingredient in that it is antioxidant, antibacterial, helps with acne, and also is a tyrosinase inhibitor, which is a, a fancy way of saying it helps with hyperpigmentation. You don't typically find all of those qualities in one ingredient. You usually would have to go to separate ingredients entirely to accomplish 
fighting acne and fighting hyperpigmentation. It also tends to be a bit more of a gentle ingredient. It is possible to overdo azelaic acid. Some people report uh, some added dryness, some added sensitivity, but in general, it actually kind of does the exact opposite of that. The catch, the catch is that the research on azelaic acid tends to be in the 15 to 20 percent range. And unfortunately, at least for those of us in the U.S., that is also a prescription-only range. So when you see companies come out with products with 10 percent azelaic acid, they are able to sell that to you because it is below the prescription level, but that's not the published literature level either. So you are kind of putting a lot of faith into that level, and yet the great thing, again, especially in 2022, is that uh, products with 10% azelaic acid have been around for a while, a lot of people have tried them, and a lot of people have said, you know what, that level did work for me. And that applies with me also. I do feel like out of the azelaic acid products I've tried so far, this would actually be one of my favorites. I really love the formula of this. First of all, it's a little bit more of a creamy product. In fact, I'll, I'll have the video up of applying it. You can see it on almost looks more like a lightweight moisturizer. And I really like that it's a creamy formula because, you know, as I just mentioned, you could experience dryness from it, but especially in a base that is so humectant rich, it's probably not going to be as drying for you. Plus, when you look at the ingredients, you see all of these other antioxidant-rich ingredients, other calming ingredients. It is a brilliant formula. It is getting into a little bit of a more pricey territory, clocking in at $19.99 for an ounce. But again, for me, I think it is very worth it. You know, again, like I was saying in the intro, if you are thinking, oh, but it's made for younger people, but if you want redness relief and you don't want to break the bank, $19.99 for an ounce of a very beautiful, cosmetically elegant azelaic acid serum is amazing. At least in my opinion, I am very happy with that serum. But let's talk, uh oh, <laughs> I think I just gave away how I feel. <laughs> let's talk about the calming cream next with panthenol, spinach, and green algae. I don't know if it's just me, but when I purchased this on the Ulta website, I expected it to also have azelaic acid, and I'm not really sure why I thought that. Because it, it doesn't. It has, again, lots of antioxidant-rich ingredients, lots of interesting ingredients. Some spinach, some turmeric, some mugwort ingredients, some gardenia, some flower ingredients, which always makes me question, uh, you know, well, how far do we want to go down the rabbit hole? Do we really want to have that conversation about the antioxidants in gardenia or is gardenia a fragrance? Anyway, uh, the point with this one is I think it's a nice and kind of more lightweight moisturizer, but I don't see myself repurchasing this. I don't think it's as special as the azelaic acid serum was for me. I think it's something that I could very easily replace in my routine, especially since my skin is a little more dry. I prefer just a little bit more heavy of a moisturizer than this was giving me. But I also want to say, you know, all of those ingredients, that may be really appealing for some. The more plant ingredients you add into a formula, the higher the risk for allergy does become. And I always tend to focus on allergy just because I'm somebody who does deal with allergies. I mean, overall, it shouldn't be a problem for most people, but it's something to keep in mind. I was looking through the reviews on the Alta website, and I did see some people who were surprised that, you know, they bought a redness relief moisturizer and experienced more redness. So yeah, bottom line for me, the clear winner that I tried in the redness line is all azelaic acid. I'm all in on the azelaic acid serum and the cream. I mean, I'll probably finish it, but I just have other moisturizers that I personally prefer over this one. And then finally, the Acne Collection. I decided that I wanted to try only one of Peach Slice's cleansers. I'd heard really mixed reviews. So I went for the Acne Clarifying Cleanser, the Salicylic Acid Acne Treatment, 2% here. This contains some Cica, some cucumber, hyaluronic acid, and salicylic acid, but like I will always point out, the most important part of cleansing is cleansing, not necessarily all of the added ingredients. All of that said, I do have a clear, clear favorite. I just, I just feel like I'm such a broken record over my favorites. I, I really do. I have an absolute favorite acne fighting cleanser and it is none other than the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. That one is just done so much for my skin. I kind of tried to swap this in and out, see if it, 
uh, was coming close to what I get from that CeraVe cleanser. And for me personally, it just wasn't. Even though I do like salicylic acid, I tend to do fine with it as a leave-on. It is overall a nice cleanser though, it really is. It's not too foamy. It has a very gentle foaminess that is incredibly hard for me to capture on camera. So I will steal one of Peach Slice's own pictures so you can see that it is in fact a foaming cleanser. But yeah, surprisingly a gentle cleanser. Overall, I liked it, but it just, if you are looking for an acne fighting cleanser, I just feel like this didn't do quite as much as benzoyl peroxide. I think with this one, I'm saying it's good, not great. In fact, I feel like that's all of my, my products in this video that I'm saying I didn't necessarily love are all good, not great. I have nothing in this video that I hate. It's just good, not great. I do like the acne exfoliating toner, but I do feel somewhat surprised that I keep seeing people call this a direct dupe of the Paula's Choice. I'm not, I'm not sure it's a, a direct dupe because they do say that it's BHA and AHA. BHA is of course different from AHA. It targets the hair follicle, it's oil soluble, whereas AHA is used for kind of more skin resurfacing. Uh, I do find that personally I have to be really careful with AHA, so I didn't want to overdo this toner. Uh, I feel like there was a, a certain time frame where I felt like I was close to overdoing it. Keep in mind I use a strong retinoid if you have a more simple routine. You might have no problem whatsoever with using this perhaps twice a day. For me, once a day was more than enough, I suspect. Overall, I like it though. This one is actually more on the great side for me, but I just don't know if I would call it a dupe for the Paula's Choice. It also does have some calming ingredients, some allantoin, some cucumber, some Sika in it. I think it's, again, a really nice formula. Just a, a arguably more intense than the Paula's Choice, at least in my opinion. I do think it's effective. It's an alcohol-free and fragrance-free toner that clears and helps prevent breakouts. I do agree with that. I think this is, this is very well done. And then finally, the patches, which is what I've been talking about from this brand for the longest period of time. I cannot possibly count for you how many of these I've gone through. Less more recently, because I break out less more recently, but to refresh, the acne spot dots are a fantastic, in my opinion, dupe for the Kosar X. It's usually about $5 for 30 of these. You actually get a little bit more than you do in the Kosar X. And I tried to capture a picture of how thick they are. They're, uh, they're not the absolute thickest patches. That award goes to Peace Out, but Peace Out charges a lot for their acne patches. These certainly aren't the thinnest kind either. They're kind of more in the middle and I find them very effective. I think they're wonderful. Peach Slices also has the Deep Blemish Micro Darts, which have, uh, as they say, this technology of dissolvable micro needles that also contain tea tree, salicylic acid, and willow bark. So in contrast to the acne spot dots, these actually have an ingredients list. The premise being that these uh, dissolvable micro needles dissolve into your skin and deeply deliver all of those ingredients so that you can target those, you know, those under the skin pimples. Oh, the worst. So when you know they're coming, you can feel them building under your skin, creating some kind of a horrifying colony of pimple. But you can't get to them with topicals yet. That is what these are perfect for. Peach Slices also has the, I forget the name of them, the dark dark spot micro darts. I stopped buying those because I think that if you deal with hyperpigmentation, I think it's just gonna take so long to treat those with this type of system. Those are really hard to treat. Listen, as somebody who's dealt with acne, acne is hard to treat. Hyperpigmentation is harder. But my friends, that's it. That's all of the Peach Slices products that I've tried at this point. Well, it's not all that I've tried. It's all I included in today's video. Again, this is all just my opinion, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if you love the Peach Slices brand. Let me know if I didn't try any products that you absolutely love and recommend. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all next time.